let's chat about Houston Dash versus Racing Louisville. The sole draw in this weekend. Zero, zero between these two teams. Lisa, I think we both went Houston in this one. Uh, yes, we both went Houston over Racing Louisville. And honestly, first 45 minutes, I was like, yeah, Houston's Happening. got this one in the bag. <laughs> I'm so confident watching this game on Friday night. I was like, yeah, I knew we both picked Houston. And I was like, we got this one done. <laughs> nope, it's a draw. <laughs> Just back to feeling not great once more. Listen, but I think another one of these teams, we, again, we're seeing some, some trends maybe in some of these games where we're looking at the level of play amongst certain teams in this one. And you're looking at a Houston that side and it just sort of felt like at any moment, like they were going to go ahead and get that breakthrough, but it just didn't, it just didn't happen. And I know we were also sort of looking for like maybe one of those, another type of those big games from Ebony Salmon against the former club, right? But the breakthrough just wasn't there in this one. No, it literally was not there. I was expecting it. Eight shots for Houston in the first half, three of them on target. They had um, 0.73 expected goals in the first half, which means they probably should have had one at that point, um, but it didn't happen. And I was totally okay and still incredibly confident heading into the halftime uh, at 0 0 knowing that the chances and the opportunities that Houston had. And then at the very end of this first half, um, racing Louisville ends up getting a yellow card. Uh, Satara Murray, defender for Racing Louisville, she gets two yellows and a red. So Racing Louisville plays the last three or so minutes of the first half, 10 players on the pitch, which is fine. At that point, it's like, let's hold defensively. Then they've got halftime where they can discuss the tactics, how they're going to shift uh, their formation, players on the pitch, uh, be a little bit more defensive-minded while also – keeping the ball a lot more. And, and frankly, they did that. I mean, I'm going to give props to Kim Bjorkegren, head coach for Racing Louisville, because whatever happened in that locker room at halftime for Racing Louisville, it worked because it, first half, it was all Houston, ball movement, creating chances, um, finding those open spaces, getting the ball to Salmon, a, creating chances and putting Racing Louisville under so much pressure defensively. And the second half, Racing Louisville picked it up. With 10 players, they played better in the second 45 than they did in the first 45. Um, at the end of this one, though, the shots were still incredibly imbalanced. 15 shots to Houston, three to Racing Louisville, and 10 on target for Houston, none on target for Racing Louisville. But at the end of this game, um, the tie, I think – it, it was huge for racing to to go down a player and end up getting three points at the end of this one. No, I'm sure they would have loved a win, but Houston stays at the top of the standings. Rachel Daly in the stands maybe gave him a little bit of, of good <laughs> mojo for this one. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, yeah. This was the farewell game, right? For yeah. for Rachel Daly, but technically not not on the pitch for this one as she's officially heading overseas with the official transfer complete. But um, yeah, I think having a player sent off, I think, yeah, I think to a certain extent racing Louisville is, you know, somewhat, you know, pleased to, to have a point, but we've been having, you know, a couple interviews with racing players and they're tired of the draws, you know, they want, they want three points. They want the win. And I think if you're Houston, I do wonder if you look at this, perhaps is like a little bit of an opportunist opportunity. Did they need to necessarily like, did this type of result make or break them in, in this, in this month of this spectacular month of August that they've been having? No, not necessarily, but they are a team that had the better of play against the lower half table team. Yep. And they also had at one point, a player advantage. They were already had a ton of space to work with in this game against Louisville. And then you subtract a player that's even more. And they just were unable to take advantage of that. So maybe it's a little bit that this, this also thought had crossed my mind and in, in my live viewing of it. And I believe I tweeted it out, but you know, it's, it's the familiarity aspect for me as well. These are two teams that played each other a, a few times already previously during the challenge cup that comes into play. You know, we've noticed this season, when there is these multiple matches under your belt against a specific opposition and sort of understanding the ebbs and flows of, of the other team that maybe this actually had the makings of a draw on it. And we just sort of decided to look past it. Dude, we, did. really we didn't want to draw. Cause we this was our first game. Like, we no, it's, yeah. We, we didn't want to draw. 
yeah, we wanted the goals and the win, but it just didn't happen. But honestly, um, for for Houston, uh, this this just extends a, a little bit of a streak for mm-hmm. for themselves as as well. Um, but uh, not only for Houston after this one, and Racing Level goes three ties in a row. Oh I my mean, gosh. four of their last five games draws for Racing Level. So picking up points here and there, but Houston is just. Yeah, this this well, time did not hurt them. Let's talk about another match that maybe had some some folks wondering what happened here. It's San Diego Wave FC versus Orlando Pride. This one was a good old fashioned NWSL after dark action took kicked off at 10:30 p.m. Eastern time. Orlando Pride undefeated in now their last six matches. Go in to San Diego and defeat the Wave 1-0. Hang on. For the lead. Hang on. I think that's the best way to put it. I mean, back-to-back losses for San Diego and Orlando picking up points in their last six games that they've played. It's Seb Hines, huge for him, uh, coach for Orlando stepping in and, and changing this side. So Seb Hines gives interim head coaches a good name, maybe Gotham's next on this on this route of, of getting someone in and, and changing things up. Uh, but for San Diego at the start of this match, um, it, Angel or Alex Morgan looked ready to go. She looked fired up. Uh, Kaylee Real got the start in place of Abby Dahlkemper, who was back. She sat out last week due to a red card accumulation. But um, Casey Stoney gave Real the start along with Gurma. And um, on the other side of it, Orlando Pride. Uh, Carrie Abello, incredibly talented, incredibly fun to watch this year. She did not get a lot of looks at the start of the season um, and not a lot of minutes with this Orlando side. And she's just grown in confidence and in her play. And I would love to watch Abello in training to see what she's doing because um, she is fantastic on the pitch in these games. But the this goal for Orlando coming from Maggie Doherty Howard in uh, a penalty kick opportunity, it was I mean, an opportunity. It was a huge opportunity. It was That's a good. bad handball by real in the box. I and mean, definitely a handball, but like a soccer, soft, it happens sometimes. It was a soft handball. Like that, the cross that came in wasn't that surprising. It was just bad defensive plays. Like as a as a defender, your hands need to be behind your back, especially when you're defending and you have maybe three two yards between you and your attacker, knowing that they could chip this ball in and cross it in. And that's exactly what Orlando did. Uh, They got the penalty kick. MDH scores at one. Um, At the end of this game, post game, I believe Kaylin Sheridan picked up a yellow at the end of it. So post game picking up um, a yellow, but in terms of what, Orlando did throughout this one they could have had or excuse me in terms of San Diego they probably could have had one or two Alex Morgan had a shot off the post in the opening seven minutes um there's a set piece opportunity again off the post for San Diego Aaron McLeod and goal for Orlando is being big bodied and, and getting in there yeah it was ultimately um a red quite frankly um you know it was uh, I think a little bit surprising for folks and and I think because it was sort of end of game uh, as teams were kind of clearing out, there was a lot of curiosity around it. Uh, saw something coming out of, uh, I think, uh, via Twitter, MLS referees sort of um, giving a little bit of context in that. I guess it was just some inappropriate things that were said to uh, the official um, and making some, you know, alluding to, to certain things like, um, you know, max fixing, max match fixing and, and, and things like that. So um, that's a big no, no, I think when, when we're looking at things like officiating and stuff within the game, um, there hasn't been any additional statements. I don't believe from, from San Diego um, around it, um, but disappointing, quite frankly, to, to say the least. Um from Just a veteran, because, a seasoned veteran. Yeah, one and quite frankly, the best goalkeeper in the NWSL mm-hmm. right now. Not not something that I, you know, anticipated, you know, seeing from, from Sheridan sort of in a post game, especially um, quite frankly, San Diego had the better of play in, yeah. in in this game. You know, uh Orlando was just very much uh, a team that was able to take their opportunities. There were there were certain stretches of momentum where I felt like Orlando was the better team at times in terms of the level of play. 
But this isn't a match where the wave were unable to have an opportunity in front of goal. We're talking about out out shooting Orlando almost double 18 to or, uh, 19 to eight yeah. shots on goal six to two, you know, and within that three block shots was pretty, pretty level there. Three, 22 crosses three within. off the crossbar or the post you had Alex Morgan hit the crossbar twice. Taylor Korniak as well hit it towards the end of the game, like 87th minute or so. Like they they were knocking on the door. Yeah. And and maybe that's why at the very end of this game, when the final whistle blew, Orlando celebrated just, like they just won the national championship or <laughs> the USL championship. Because they, it was the well, body language was very clear. They were pumped. They yeah. were pumped and like well deserved, right? San Diego is at the top of the standings for majority of this regular season. And this was a very, very hard battled game for both of these sides. And San Diego had the chances and, and they're thanking Aaron McLeod and goal, frankly, for coming up big and being an intimidating factor in there. Yeah. Like I said, 20, like a, what was 22 crosses, right? Yeah. That I saw that they sent it to the box. So um, I don't think you can look at this game and say uh, that San Diego didn't have their opportunities to at the very least get a result mm -hmm. in a game like this. So to sort of see it, kind of end with a bit of you know jawing at officials after the final whistles i think you know it takes away from because now you're going to have a your best your starting goalkeeper is going to be unavailable for the next match that versus, that costs, houston. versus houston who is yeah. number two in the standings right now that's, that's not to, yeah that's going yeah. to affect your entire team in the week ahead you know it's it's an uh it's unfortunate uh scenario and i think you know we've been this is the final game that we're talking about so maybe let's talk about this and sort of um a, a brief look ahead you know we're looking at this we, we do overall standings month to month so we're still in august but even in just this weekend alone there's been some small shifting in in the standings you've got san diego who were in a large stretch of their first half of the season in first place and they have not had i think a, a a good start to their second half of the season and i'm including their one win in the last five games they've got three losses in their last five games and one yeah. win and that was a narrow 1-0 win against chicago where viewing that there's a similar argument to be made to Chicago where it's like they had the better of play during stretches and almost looked as if they could have had a result with the player advantage. That's the game where they lost out on Debbie, uh, Abby Dahlkepper with the red. So there's some, there's something with San Diego, I think in the second half of the season. And we talked about the concept of a long, you know, playing out the, the long grind of a regular season. So sometimes when that comes into play, when you're hitting the second half, sometimes, maybe there's a level of predictability that comes into play after you've played a number of games and you have, there's a ton of footage out there at this point for the opposition yeah. to take a look at. And, you know, I think when it comes to this game, I'm looking at the sidelines. I think it came down to the coaching and Sev Hines had a better game plan coming into this match than Casey Stoney. And so we're looking at San Diego and what they've done their last five games, as you just mentioned, three losses, one draw, one win. And, and next week, San Diego will play Houston, who in their last five have three wins. So the exact opposite of what San Diego has. San Diego, three losses. Houston three wins. And as you mentioned, it comes down to the sidelines and, and Seb Hines for Orlando out coaching Casey Stoney in this match um, between San Diego and, and Orlando. And when you look at the Houston side, I think Juan Carlos Amaros has done a fantastic job with this Houston side, picking up three wins in their last five games. So next week is going to be very interesting for San Diego and Houston, especially because these two sides are number two and three Houston at two. San Diego at three in the standings. And I, at that point, Houston wants a top three because, right, top six, make the playoffs, top three, get a bye. You want to be as close to that top as possible. And they're both with 25 points. So next week's a huge game for these two sides. Yeah, we're, we're getting, we're cutting it close here on the final stretch.